Hello there, beautiful people. I am Sasha, and I'm the artist behind Fibers of Mine. I am also a teacher for Macrame for Beginners group on Facebook. And if you're not familiar with the group, I advise you go and check them out because you will get a ton of inspiration, a group of wonderful teachers who will teach you all kinds of projects from very, very simple to more advanced like this one. And uh, you also will get uh, support of the wonderful community. Now, if you are a member of the group, you probably remember a Sea of Cortez painting that I created probably a year ago. It was much larger and a tiny bit different, but a lot of you asked for the tutorial and I did start creating a tutorial, but then I ran out in, uh, or I ran in into some difficulties. I lost some footage and because it takes so long, I just, I never got to it. Anyway, now I recreated this uh, piece only on smaller scale. And this is sort of a baby Sea of Cortez. And as you can see, it's a little bit different on the top, but you can always uh, skip this part and just start your hanging straight from the doll. So uh, about this tutorial, because it is quite extensive and it is pretty long, I broke it out in two sections. So there will be part one and part two. So watch out for them on YouTube. And um, well, let's get started. I will put all the materials and measurements in the description below. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, you would like to say thank you, you always can buy me a virtual coffee. I will put the link in the description as well. And it's also on the banner somewhere. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started. I'll see you in the tutorial. So what we're doing here, we're just creating large head knots with three ropes. So take your three strands, fold them in half, and we will create the regular large head knot. Put your strands over the dovel, the loop created on the back, and just pull your tails through. You can see that I am putting them quite far apart from each other. Apart from each other, and that is because we will be spreading these tails and creating, putting a double right here with the double half hitch knots. And because these will be spread, you don't need them to be very close together. Now that we have all of our rope attached, we will create a row of double half hitch knots over the double right here. And um, if you don't know how to do the double half hitch knot, I can show you we are going to start with wrapping the cord around the doll and placing it on the left side of the rope bring it over and over the dovel again and through the loop right here. Although I assume you already know how to make double half hitch knots. So to create this line straight, I will go ahead and attach the dovel to this side as well to keep it in the line with the double half hitch knot and again I will be pulling it over the double on the left side of the cord and then over the double and through the loop. Oops. <laughs> All right, one more time. There you go. All right, now you can see whether it's straight and go ahead and take each of the strands and create double half hitch knot. So over the double.
uh, that goes on the left side and over the dowel and through the loop. Okay, and repeat that with each of the strands all the way to the end. And here is what you should have so far. And let's move to the next step. Next, I cut a piece of rope that is much longer than the width of our work. And I will create a wave right here with double half hitch knots. And again, you start, you can decide how far you want this wave to start. I am going to leave it just a little bit of room here. And this first one will be tricky just because you have to hold it on. But let's get it done. Okay. Leave a little bit of tail here so it doesn't uh, disappear on you. Don't pull it too far in you will need it to secure on the back later, and I will show you how. And um, the shape of your wave is really up to you. You can just go straight down like this, or make it a little bit more of an interesting shape. And uh, as I showed you in different tutorials, you always point your guide, which is this rope, um, to the way you want to go. So if you want the wave to go up, you will point up. If you want it to go down, you point down. I will be pointing down at this point, and then I will shape my wave in the way I want it to be. You don't want them, <clears throat> the knots to be too close to each other so they are not bunching up. And you see how it started pulling that way and I will spread them up just a little bit so all these strands are hanging down straight. And next, I will create the second wave mimicking the first one, the shape of the first one, just a little bit more down here. So the distance right here is up to you. I just picked whatever looked good to me. So this is enough. I don't want my piece to be way too long. So uh, here's where I'm going to start making my second wave and I will not bore you with it. You got the idea from the first one. Um, just try to make it as similar as possible to the shape that you have above right here. And here is what you should have so far. Next, I will add another doll underneath the wave right here. The same way we did on the top. So you can tie it on both sides just to be sure that it's straight. And at this angle it's hard for me to judge, but I think this is about it. Don't forget that you have some tails hanging here. You can put them out of the way so you don't accidentally tie it up with the rest. And uh, I will have to adjust it later, but this is seems straight at this point.
Okay. When you tie it up and straighten it out, make sure it's straight, um, go ahead and tie double half hitch knots all the way. And this is what you should have so far. Now, you can omit this step, uh, but I decided that I want to do a braid right underneath this uh, part. And you can look how to make this braid in one of my tutorials, and I put the link there. I don't know where it goes, but so. Um, but I can show you here too. It's a little uh, of a process, but uh, it will be pretty. So take your right one of the right cords on the left. You have two. Take the right one over the left and through the loop. Don't bring it too far up. You will need this opening right there. You will repeat this process. You leave this cord hanging, bring your right cord over the left from behind and into this opening right there that you left. Pull it through. Straighten it out a little bit. And again, you see there's a little opening left there, so leave it be. Leave these cords behind, right cord over the left, on the back and through this opening. Okay, so continue like this all the way to the end and I will meet you there. All right, and here is the braid. Oh, I think this is confusing because this is just the end from the top and braid ends right here. Next, I will put another doll here underneath leaving some room between because I will want to put some Ryan knots right here to make the fringe fuller and add some colors to it. So we'll do the same thing we've done before here. I will start tying the knot on both sides, excuse me. <laughs> I hit the camera, I think. All right, and the distance is not very big right there. I would say, I don't know, what is it about my first join the pinky? So about that far and do the same thing just create double half hitch knots all the way through and I'll meet you there and here what we have so far and as you can see I have very long cords still left and what I will do next I will cut them and use them for the French because I want my fringe to be cut later in the wave that mimics the wave that we did uh, up in the body of our hanging, I will cut the fringe about this long and it doesn't have to be straight. Don't worry about it at this point. Unless you want your fringe straight, then you can spend more time. But I just want to cut it so my... Um, tails are not hanging so long and I can reuse them for the French. So let's do this satisfying cutting sound. Does everyone enjoy cutting sound? I do. All right. So here I have a bunch of these cuttings and what we will do next, we will do Raya knots. 
right here in these openings. Raya knots often used in weavings and because it's mockery weave, we will be using a lot of weaving techniques here and uh, it might come useful if you try to do weavings on a loom. So let's try uh, a Raya knot and Raya knot is created by a piece of string. You just fold it in half, bring it in front of two strings that you want to wrap your Raya knots about. One of the strands goes around and between and under this piece. And then do the same thing with the other one in between and under the piece. Now just pull it down and you see this cross piece of string just keeping it down so it's not gonna get undone. You will do the same thing with the rest of these strings and the rest of the cuttings that you have. Let's do another one just for practice and again I will meet you at the end. So one goes in In between, sorry if it's kind of wiggly, it's not a very good angle here for me, but there you go. And because we will be doing another row of these rye knots only in color, we will need these um, openings right there. So pull them down, not too hard, but so they sit on the bottom. All right, we'll continue to the rest and I will meet you there. And here are our rye knots. As you can see, uh, the fringe is very uneven, but as I said, we will tackle it uh, after. So at this point, you have your skeleton all pretty much done. So we are going to move next to this section right here and create our color section. And you see my little plant hair is popping out there. So he's so cute. Next, we will be working in this section, adding color. And the colors we'll be working with is dark blue, dark teal, the uh, denim blue, denim blue, I'm sorry, the um, aquamarine, I believe this color is called, and these two uh, mint colors. Uh, I have five colors except for this one in my shop as of today. So if you want to check them out, you can um, go down there and see what I have. With these colors, I will be working from both sides meeting in the middle. I will start with darker colors and have the lighter color come in in the middle and then end up with the dark color again. Because we don't have even number of this um, strings right here, double strings. I will double some of the colors and you will see how I choose to do that. Um, it's your choice how you would like to distribute your colors. So let's get started. I will begin by measuring my color strings to go in this section. And in my previous videos, I did advise you to measure 10 times the length. And that is because the longer your color section is, the longer the length you will need for the square knots. This is not very long, so I will measure this one at eight times the length and see how much um, cord I have left and then adjust from there. So let's do this. Uh, we'll measure, I will just fold it eight times and then I will do one section and we'll see how much cord we used, okay? 
All right, so this is eight length. It seems pretty long, so maybe less, but let's see. So in this color sections, what we will do, we will start creating uh, half square knots, which will make a sp spiral. And I assume you know how to make square knots, but here we go. So um, put your string, cut it in the middle, fold it in the middle, then put behind your two strings right here, the right one goes over the two strings in the middle, the left one goes over the right on the back and through the loop. And it's falling down, but you can always push it back up and repeat the same thing. So right go, goes over the middle two, left over the right, behind and through the loop. All right, so here I have one more maybe. Yep, and I actually am very satisfied with how much cord I have because I would like to tie it on the back later and I have enough to tie it off and then um, hide the pieces. So eight length was pretty good. You can, if you don't want to um, have that much left, you can do seven. But again, as I said, remember the longer your color strip is the longer the length of your color cord have to be so if your length is really long you will need more than 10 times you will need 12 sometimes 15 again depending on the length this is not very long it's like what see even less than my hand so um eight times was enough for me so now that I established how long I need my strings to be, I cut, measured and cut all my color cords and I put them in the places where I want them to be. So next I will go ahead and just create spirals in all of those cords and I'll see you after that. As you can see, I am halfway through, but here's something I wanted to point out. When you're working in the constricted sort of space, your cords, inside cords, will be twisted. And that is all right. They are inside, and actually the twist is not bad because, as you can see, they kind of slacken after a while. And when they twist, they become a little bit more sturdy. So don't worry if your cords are twisted. Uh, it is perfectly fine. Just continue working until the very end and you will not see that twist when you come all the way to the bottom. And here is what we have so far. A beautiful gradient of colors. So next, we will turn our work around and take care of those uh, hanging ends. Here is the back of our work. I already finished all of these colors. And what I do on the back, I just tie it up in a knot. Very tightly. Then I clip the ends very closely like this oops and then i take the fabric glue i usually just put it in a little jar and i use the brush to apply it to the ends that i just clipped and that way they will not go anywhere there's other methods. You can pull the strength through if you want. Um, I've heard somebody said that, but I never had luck to do that without messing things up. For these tails, I usually just take thread and needle and 
saw them to the back. Whoops, excuse me. Well, you got the idea. So, um, and then just clip the ends. And here how it will look like when you secure those tails. Next, we will work with the fringe. As you can see, the rye knots that I added later are longer. So I will go ahead and trim them to the same length as the ones on the back. Next, we will brush the fringe. I will be using the macrame brush. If you don't have macrame brush, you can purchase the pet brush. That will work just as well. And after that process, we will uh, steam the fringe and then brush it again, steam it again and brush it again. And that process will go about two to three times. So I will come back after I brush the fringe and uh, we will steam it. Now that I brushed my fringe, I will steam it from the front and from the back. And then I will brush it again and steam it again and brush it again and steam it again and brush it again. And the reason for that is that the fibers relax. And when you do that several times, they will not curl on you after a period of time. So this process is pretty uh, time consuming, but it's definitely worth it. And here is how the fringe looks after it's been brushed and steamed three times. Next, we will cut it to shape. I want the fringe to mimic the shape of the wave that is on top. So that is what I will do. But if you want to leave it straight, you can just trim it straight. And I will just literally wing it. And then I will go back and trim it so it's all nice and neat. Next, I will add the layer of color cord for the fringe. This layer we will not brush, and that is why I brushed the first layer first. So cut the length of the cord a little bit longer than your current fringe that you already cut to shape, and cut them in the same arrangement that the colors above. So I have two dark blues, then the lighter blue, the teal and so forth. Next I will create a row of raya knots with the colors on, right on top of the white ones. And for this I will be using the hook just so it's easier for me to pull strands through. All right, and continue in the same manner until you reach the other end, and I'll meet you there and show you what you're gonna get. And here is what you should have so far. Next, I will go ahead and cut the color cord to the shape of the fridge on the bottom.
This is what you should have so far. I probably will go and cut this top color layer even shorter to mimic this wave just to give more definition between bottom layer and the top layer. It's up to you what you want to do here. Though you can add another layer of the rye knots to make it a little bit fuller. But as I said, it's up to you.